Why are water bears tiny target rays? Why are they, why are they so dumb, really? Well, uh, let me explain. You know, I've spent so many um, hours uh, staring at tiny uh, creatures, micro animals, microorganisms. I've uh, looked at them under my microscope. And uh, one of the most uh, sought after discoveries for pretty much any microscopist or beginning microscopist is, is the water bear. It's a tardigrade. Well, um, yeah, many years ago, I also uh, luckily found one uh, after long searching. Um, but there was a little bit of a disappointment uh, because after observing it uh, for a little while, I realized that this little tiny creature wasn't really doing anything special. It wasn't doing anything smart. It was just kind of just walking around aimlessly, uh, very clumsy, really, um, even running around in a circle. And, and it kind of made me wonder a little bit, are those tardigrades, those water bears, aren't they kind of... Um, Sorry to say, so aren't they kind of dumb a little bit? Well, that's what I would like to explore uh, a little bit in this video. Hi, hello, and welcome again. Microbe Hunter here. Well, um, uh, of course, uh, this sounds very, um, yeah, a little bit condescending to say that those little tiny animals are a little bit, um, yeah, dumb. Um, but actually, uh, they are quite uh, popular in any case, especially because uh, they look so cute, right? Um, and I get it. They're quite adorable. Um, actually, they only look cute under the microscope. I actually also 3D printed one of them. Um, and then they look a little bit not so cute anymore because they actually also sometimes eat each other. They like to cannibalize as well. Depends on the species. Yeah, well, in any case, um, uh, my first tardigrade um, that I found uh, was uh, very fascinating uh, for me. I looked at it and uh, it was uh, quite clumsy, slipping all the time um, uh, on this uh, smooth uh, um, uh, microscope slide and not being able to move ahead. Um, but those tardigrades actually are quite known to be very resilient. Um, they can survive freezing cold. They can survive radiation. They can even dry out completely. Um, tardigrades were sent into space uh, to be studied there, and they're able to uh, survive quite a, a range of extreme environments. Um, but actually, for a creature that's so good at surviving, they do not seem to be very intelligent, right? I mean, for example, they do have tiny eye spots to detect light. Uh, they're also able to sense chemicals, and they're also able to respond to their surroundings, but they don't have real eyes, um, and they do not have any complex behavior. And uh, worst of all, um, they're not really able to learn anything, and they don't seem to have any memory either. So essentially, if we want to explore this a little bit more, um, we have to dig a little bit uh, into the nervous system. And um, yeah, with a little bit of research, uh, we're all able to find out that they don't even have a fully developed brain. Now, they do have something called a cerebral ganglion. This is a cluster of nerve cells um, that kind of looks a little bit... I wouldn't call it a brain really, but it ha kind of has the function a little bit of a brain, but it only controls basic functions like movement and feeding, just the essential things that are necessary uh, for, for survival. We can think of it a little bit like, like a basic reflex system. For example, the, those tardigrades are able to detect light, they are able to detect touch and certain chemicals, and they can respond to that, but it's very, very, um, yeah, like a reflex, very reflexive. They're not really making any decisions, they're not of course not thinking of what they're doing, they just react. Yeah, and uh, obviously, as I just said, this, they don't have a memory. In that sense, a tardigrade is a little bit like a, a temperature control um, to control the water temperature. Um, it, yeah, it's also not able to do any complex tasks. Um, tardigrades cannot recognize patterns. Their eyes are also way too simple for that. And of course, they do not have, uh, or to what we know is they do not have any individuality or even self-awareness. Now, if we go back in time, um, yeah, the first uh, person who discovered it was a researcher called Goethe. And uh, Johann August Ephraim Goese, what a, what a name. He was a German zoologist. Um, and in 1773, with his microscope, he was actually able to already detect, uh, not detect them, but uh, observe them. And he made drawings. Yeah? And he uh, also realized they were uh, quite clumsy a little bit. And uh, after watching the tardigrades for a while, um, I totally get why he actually said that. Because they bumble around, uh, they cling, they like to cling to, to things, trying to, to hold on to something. Um, but uh, when you read his writings, what really stood out was that he um, also observed that one of them was actually dying. Right? Um, this was a quite uh, interesting realization for him because he then wrote that um, yeah, even small microscopic creatures um, can experience life and death and uh, can experience pain. Um, I'm paraphrasing right now. So I think that's a very interesting realization because uh, um, it shows a little bit that uh, he started to understand or people started to understand at that time that even the tiniest organisms um, are part of, of a kind of a life cycle and that they're also able to feel pain. However, um, I'm 
not quite sure whether he was right, right? Um, because um, I don't know if they are actually able to feel pain. Just because uh, organisms are able to respond to an environment does not automatically mean that have a self-perception, awareness, and even a sense um, of pain. So the answer is probably, probably they're not uh, able um, to feel pain. Pain also because they have no memory, no ability to learn, and, and, and so on. So this individuality, as we know it for human beings, this self-awareness should not be transferred to other um, organisms. And uh, without a complex brain, it's very unlikely that uh, they are any able to um, yeah do anything um, that uh, we can call consciousness. So they're probably not conscious. Now. Um, I think, however, um, and we know that that uh, subjective perception is not necessary for them to survive, and they're quite successful, actually, right? And um, they do, don't need to think about their environment. They don't need to reflect. Uh, they only have to react to it. And as a matter of fact, some scientists did some studies, and they actually did find that um, tardigrades are able to do a very, very simple form of learning called habituation. And this basically means that they poked one of those tardigrades, and they responded. Yeah, they are able to do that. But if you keep on poking the Degrade, they stop responding because they kind of get used to the stimuli. Um, and uh, this can be seen as a very, very basic form of learning. But as you probably understand yourself, this is very far away from the learning uh, that we are uh, able to do as human beings or even slightly higher animals. So the question is now is this, yeah, why, huh? right? And uh, the thing is, is I think what we have to be careful here is, is that we should not transfer any human characteristics uh, um, uh, to, to other living things. Um, essentially, the tardigrades, like other living things, are successful the, the way they are. And to answer the question, why are they so dumb? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's because they don't have to be intelligent. Yeah, they are successful as they are. They're able to survive all sorts of extreme conditions. Um, and it is not a good idea to always compare other living things uh, with uh, us humans. Yeah? Uh, who says that we're the standard? Yeah, maybe they are more smart, on the quotation marks, because they're able um, to survive uh, radiation, dryness, whatever, freezing cold. We humans are not able to do that uh, quite well, but we need our intelligence um, to change our environment around to suit our needs. If it's too cold, we turn up uh, the heater, we put on warmer clothing, right? Uh, we need our intelligence to survive. Tardigrades, they don't uh, need that. They have other strategies. So, and I think I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I think, uh, um, of course, you, this is a very interesting topic, although a little bit goes a little bit into philosophy. I'd like to hear what uh, you have to say here. That's why there is, of course, always a comments section um, in the, the bottom below where you can uh, post uh, your opinions on this matter. For me, that's all I would like to share with you today. I would like to thank all of my supporters, of course. Happy microbe hunting as always, and see you around next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.